You're very welcome. It's nice to have you. Uh, some of you remember us being here in this field, uh, maybe 17, 18, maybe 19 years ago, I don't know, round about then. And we were in a portable hall just inside the hill there, and God blessed at those meetings too, and he's going to bless at this time. So, as Stephen says, get praying about the meetings, talking about the meetings, and uh, encourage one another, encourage these young men, and ask people to come, and we feel that the Lord uh, has great things in store for us in the days that lie ahead. Now, Sunday night is a great night, and we praise God for you coming, but Monday night, can Ivan Thompson used to call it the bucket night, and we need to... Uh, Try and get out on Monday night. You people that belong to the lifeboat, now get out on Monday night and Tuesday night and any night that you can and support us here. And the Lord surely will bless us. We're turning to the Word of God and to Genesis chapter, chapter 3 and the verse 7. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 7. And we're going well tonight as far as time is concerned. And uh, we're reading from the seventh verse, and uh, many of you know the context that Adam and Eve uh, have uh, sinned in the Garden of Eden, and uh, God is angry, and he always is with sin, and uh, we read in verse seven what happened regarding them the moment that they fell from the grace of God. Verse seven, chapter three, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, or the evening time of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And so reads the word of the Lord. Just a moment's prayer, please. Father, we pray that there'll come a stillness over this tent. We pray that the speaking voice of God will register tonight. We pray, Lord, that you will help me, thy unworthy servant, to preach this mighty truth of God to men and women. Come, we pray, loving Father, I need your help. Oh God, I'm in great need tonight. And without thee, I can do nothing. Help us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, I don't know of any better question uh, to open a gospel mission with than the first question that God ever asked to mankind. The first question God ever spoke to a sinful man. And we find it in the ninth verse of this third chapter of Genesis. Adam, where art thou? Adam, where art thou? Thou. Now this question encapsulates in a nutshell the very reason that we are here in the side of this field in this tent tonight. 
Because God in his grace and in his mercy is still seeking and pursuing individual men and women for himself. He's seeking sinners and always has been and always will while the day of grace is extended. During the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, he issued three calls. One, come unto me. Two, follow me. Three, abide in me. And that is the order. And let me say to you tonight, if you're not enjoying all three of these commands, you're not living a joyful, happy, victorious Christian life. It's one thing to come to him, it's another thing to follow him, and it's another thing to abide in him. But we're not dealing with that tonight. This question has to do with a man and his wife. A man and his wife who were hiding and who were duking from the eternal, omnipotent, all-powerful God of heaven. And, you're going, and they are going to discover, and we and you are going to discover, that you cannot hide from God. Now get that into your mind tonight. You cannot hide from God. You can juke and you can uh, run but you can't hide from God. And maybe there's some of you in this meeting tonight and you're fleeing from something. Well, let me tell you that the hound of the Holy Ghost will catch up with you one day and you'll have to face God. Now, the only change that there is here in this question and this our text tonight is the name. Because man's nature has not changed one bit. There's not one change, I tell you, from ancient man to modern man, because the problem is still the same and always will be the same. It is sin. Just because we're living in the 21st century doesn't make any difference. The only difference here is the name. So I'm going to change the name tonight. I'm allowed to do that. And I'm going to change it like this. And I'm going to say like this, Tom, where art thou? Grace, where art thou? Harry, where art thou? Billy, where art thou? Where art thou tonight in the sight of the eternal God? Are you juking? Are you hiding? Are you running? How art thou? I say to you tonight, whoever you are, backslider, sinner, whoever or wherever you are tonight, come out, come out from behind the trees and face the God of heaven as he's calling you and come to this field for you. Come out and face him. Come out and meet him. Let him bless you. Let him save you. Let him deliver you. Let him cleanse you. Let him give you peace with God. Let him give you assurance of heaven. Let him give you what he wants to give you. Let him give you what he died to give you. Come tonight. He's calling you. I don't know who he's calling in this meeting tonight, but he's asking you the question, where art thou? Now, he didn't ask Adam and Eve this question because he didn't know where they were. He's the eternal God, he knows all things. Way down in the school that I went to, well, I didn't go that often to it, but I went to it sometimes, a wee, wee primary school away in the west of Permanna. And Mrs. Bigley was the teacher, and she had, she had a blackboard, and she would put up on the blackboard, uh, five and four, what's five and four? Do you think she didn't know it? Well, I didn't know it, but she told me what it was. And if she wouldn't have told me what it was, I wouldn't have known it. Five and four is nine. She, was, she knew, but she wanted to know, did I know? And God knows where you are tonight, but he wants to draw you out. He wants to bring you out into the open. 
Now notice this, that the question is not, how art thou? Boy, if I was to sit down beside you tonight in this meeting, I tell you I'd hear an earful. Oh, lumbago. Oh, pains. Oh, there's a hole. Oh, I'm not hearing too well. And I'm not seeing too well. And, and man, it would go on for a whole day. Maybe it'd be something worse than that. I don't know. Now, it's not that God's not concerned about your physical condition. He is. There's not a throb or through, but his heart doesn't know. But we are not a medical center out in this field tonight. This is not a scanning unit from some hospital that we have here tonight to deal with physical souls of men. We're dealing with the spiritual end of things. And God's not asking you tonight, how art thou? He's not asking that. Not asking, and not one bit concerned in that sense tonight in this meeting about your physical condition. He wants to know how you are spiritually. He's not, he's not concerned her, her, or who art thou. He's not concerned who you are. <coughs> Whether you're a Roman Catholic, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Methodist, it doesn't matter to God. God's not concerned, my friend, about tags and flags, and he's not concerned about, about where you come from or anything. All he's concerned about is tonight is your soul. That's all we're concerned about, your soul. You see, it doesn't matter where you belong to. It's the same message for all and every one of us. We're all sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is not a just man upon the earth and one that doeth good. We're all under that same umbrella, my dear friends, in Tamnamor and Kiliman and round this whole district tonight, wherever we are, whoever we are, wherever, wherever we lay or go on Sunday morning, it doesn't matter. Listen, we're all sinners. Has the sin question been dealt with? We are not here to win you to the lifeboat. We're here to win you to the Lord. We're here that you might come and have sins forgiven and peace with God. God's concerned about that. It's where art thou spiritually? Where art thou in relation to sin? Where art thou in relation to the gospel? Where art thou in relation to judgment? Where art thou in relation to death? Death's coming, sir. It's coming. It is appointed on the man once to die. Man's days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. And I tell you, before tomorrow night, you could be out into the eternity. And we're here to plead with you. And God is here to call you. And he's calling you. And he's asking you, examine your life. Examine your heart. Now, where are you? Where are you in relation to me? He says. Where are you in relation to this great day of judgment that's coming? In relation to this day when you'll give your last breath? He wants to know, and he wants you to answer that tonight. Just as Mrs. Bigley wanted us to answer that question, he wants you to answer that tonight. Can I just ask some of the believers here tonight, where are you in relation to the Lord? Hmm? Oh, you said, I, 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 I am saved. Very good. What do you know about the spirit-filled life? What do you know about a prayer life? What do you know about following the Lord and abiding in the Lord? What do you know about that? Because if we're abiding in him, I'll tell you this, we'll be bringing forth fruit and there'll be fruit to be seen. Come on to me, follow me, abide in me. Are you enjoying your Christian life tonight? Do you look forward to the prayer meeting? Do you look forward to getting alone with God? Or was there a time you used to and you don't any longer and you've grown cold and you've got away from God? Well, I pray that you'll be revived in these meetings. I pray that there'll be a fresh touch come upon you and you'll have a desire to get into the prayer meeting. You'll have a desire to witness for others. You'll, you'll get the old flame back into your soul again for God. Oh, I tell you, 
Maybe you're backslidden badly tonight. Maybe there was a time you did run well and something has happened, something has got in. And, uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it, was another, maybe it was some Christian. Maybe it was something at work. Maybe it was a family problem. I don't know what it is. But he's speaking to you tonight. He's speaking to you tonight. And he wants you to be honest and he wants you to come out and he wants you to confess and he wants you to face up to the fact of where you are. So we wouldn't know how or where you are tonight spiritually with God. The one beside you would know and your very own wife might know what's in your heart tonight. But God does. He knows it without a doubt. Oh, friend, tonight, listen. Listen, backslider, tonight. Listen, Christian, tonight. God expects you to be honest. He expects you to face things honestly. He hates hypocrisy. How are things at home? Hmm? How are things with the family? Before Duncan Campbell came to prominence in the Scott Revival in Outer Hebrides, he was sitting in the back of a meeting one night and there was a man giving his testimony. And in front of him at the back were two ladies. And every now and again, one lady would say to the other, when he was testifying, that's a lie. Do we tell lies on the pulpit? And then, then she would say, nothing, there's nothing about that at all. Nothing. Do you know who she was? She was his wife. Well, she would know, wouldn't she? And the children would know. No, we mightn't know shake hands and they mightn't know at work and they mightn't know at school. But you know. You know where you are. You see, friend, listen. There was the privileges that Adam and Eve had. They heard the voice of God. God cared enough to come down into the garden at the evening time of the day. How long there was between the sin and the sentence, I don't know. But he came down in the evening time of the day and he spoke to them. That's the greatest privilege I can tell you that any man or woman can ever have in this world that the eternal, almighty God would speak to sinful men. What a privilege. What a privilege. God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. My, think of it tonight. God speaks, the Son speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks. All Trinity is involved in reaching for your soul tonight. Boys, I remember that night in 1970 on the shore of Loch Air looking out over onto the loch. And I remembered, and I'll never forget it, when the God of heaven spoke to a rebel and a sinner like me, I'll never fail. He didn't speak audibly to me. But I tell you, the voice of God came deep into my soul in the early hours of a Monday morning. And all my past life came up before me. I didn't know what was wrong with me and I didn't know what was going on. All I knew that I was a drunkard, and all I knew that I was a blasphemer, and all I knew was dirty jokes, and all the old filthy, hand black with tobacco. Oh, but the gracious God of heaven began to speak to a wretch like me. My friend, it was a fearful night. As I'll show you in a minute as we close. It was the same with Adam and Eve. Here's what Adam and Eve said whenever God spoke. I heard thy voice and I was afraid. There might well be. 
the voice of him that shook the earth, the voice of him that maketh the hinds to calm, the voice of him who rolleth like thunder, the voice of the Creator speaking. Have you any fear of God tonight? Hmm? Have you any fear of a holy God? I tell you, that fear came on me that night, and it was about the past. Have you any fear of the past? Are you running from it and hiding from it and duking from it? But listen, you'll have to come out now. And this is your night. This is your night. God requires that which is past. And he showed me that night that my past life was in shambles. My past life was awful. And the past life that I had done, and he was showing me, and he was facing me. And he says, Bertie, this is where you are. But this is what I want to make of you, and this is what I want to do with you. And in his mercy, he saved me. God requires that which is past. I tried to run. I tried to duke. I tried to make excuses. But he cornered me that night. And I pray if you're not saved tonight that you'll not be able to sleep. that you'll not be able to watch the news, that you will realize that you have an eternal soul and God and his mercy has brought you into a meeting to speak to you. In closing, here are the options that you have, very briefly. You have options. As you listen to his voice, in the inner soul tonight, listen, you have options and you have a choice. And the first option is this. You can reject his call and you can ignore it or try to ignore it. That's what, that's what Pharaoh did. Here's what Pharaoh said when he was faced by Moses. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? I tell you, rebellion is one thing above all that keeps man and woman back from God, rebelling against the voice and the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Do not rebel against them. That's what they did in the Lord Jesus' day. They said, we will not have this man to rule over us. Don't say that tonight about the loving Christ who has come to speak to you and come to deliver you tonight. Now, the second option is this. You can hide like Adam and Eve. And you can run for cover. And you can cover yourself with religion and with all sorts of things and you can make excuses. But it will not do, my friend. It will not do. Some cover themselves by the fact to say, well, I go to church and I take communion and I'm baptized and I'm confirmed and I'm as good as I live a better life than some of the Christians. And that wouldn't be hard, mind you. And I'm a good person. I'm not the worst of persons, but I'm not the best of persons. But uh, God will forgive me, and one day I'll get into heaven. He'll not. Except a man be born again, he cannot. Cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't get in, my friend. You cannot get in without the new birth. You must be born again. That's what we're trying to say to you. That's what God wants to say to you. That's why he sent his son to die for you. 
doesn't matter. I'm a good Methodist. I'm a good Baptist. It doesn't matter. Whosoever covereth his sin shall not prosper, but who confesses and forsaketh them shall find mercy. Now, here's the third option. And the only option, the only sensible option. Come out of your hiding. Flee to the outstretched arms of the Saviour when he says, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You need rest, don't you? You're troubled tonight. You have a troubled soul tonight. I know you have. I feel it. Well, he has his arms stretched out to you tonight. And he says, Come, for all things are now ready. You have an option, I tell you, to come. Come now. No ifs, no buts. Just come. Just come. And seek him while he may be found. And call upon him while he is near. Don't be running, don't be duking anymore. Say, I'm coming, Lord. I'm going to face you, Lord. I'm going to come, Lord, with my sin. He doesn't want to harm me. He doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to bless you. God waited until the cool of the day, until the evening time. Listen, I tell you, it's late. It's dark, my friends. It's dark. It's very dark. The world is in the chaos tonight. England is in the state tonight. The nation has been divided tonight. God is dealing with our nation because of their sin. He's renting the nation in two. Can you not see how close we are to the judgment and to the end and to the coming of the Lord? Oh, I wouldn't be in your shoes unsaved tonight for all the millions of the world. He has come tonight to this meeting to rescue you, to redeem you, to save you. And the story tells us he went out. Well, we know that he must have went out into the field and to the hillside and selected a sheep or lambs. And he slew the innocent animal. And he took the skins off them, and Adam and Eve sewed them together, and they covered themselves. They took off the old fig leaves, the old perishing fig leaves, the perishing things of clay are but for one brief day. And they clothed themselves, and that's what the word is, it's clothed, they're wrapped around them. They are wrapped around them, the covering. And God wants to wrap around you tonight, the covering. Isaiah tells us in, in his word about the covering of righteousness and the covering of God's salvation. Listen, he wants to literally take you in, your, in his arms tonight and wrap his arms around you and clothe you and cover you and keep you safe for all eternity. Those innocent, that innocent animal out there never done anybody any harm. And the animal rights people might well say, how dare them touch an innocent animal. God took that little, that thing, whatever it was, we're not sure, but whatever it was, God took it and he slew it and shed its blood. And there on that hillside that day, just when man had sinned, God had provided a way back and the blood runs right through to Calvary and to the cross and the blood maketh the atonement for the soul. It was the first message in picture and the first message symbolically ever preached of the gospel that day when God covered the sins of man and he's covering them ever since through the blood of Jesus. And we move on to that old cross. Where there he hung, stripped naked and crowned with thorns, his back lashed like a ploughed field, and every bone in his body out of joint, and my Saviour, 
my loving Savior that spoke to me that night in my sin, said, Come, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And that blood that flowed from Calvary's cross, down Calvary's cross, from my wounded Savior, was the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanseth us from all sin. Oh, the privilege and the patience and the pardon of a loving God is still here tonight on the 14th of September 2014 in the field opposite Cappers. And what are you going to do? That's the question now. What are you going to do? Are you going to reject him? Are you going to rebel against him? Are you going to keep on running and hiding? Or are you going to come out into the open tonight and say, it's time to seek the Lord? Well, go just out to the door and come down. There's a porter cabin and we'll pray with you. We've prayed with hundreds over the years and led them to Christ. And we'll do the same with you tonight. Ring us, come to our home, the numbers on those leaflets, some of them tracks. Come to us. Come to Christ. You don't need us. Just say where you're sitting tonight, Lord, this message has been for me. Lord, Lord, you know where I am. I'm in a mess financially and I'm in a mess maritally. I'm in a mess. My whole life's in a mess. My friend, it's not a matter of just nodding head or anything else. It's a matter of deep conviction and seeing where you are with God and coming to him and the one that can claim. And you make a move and I'll tell you, he'll come. He'll wrap his arms around you and he'll cover you for all eternity. Great is my Savior tonight. And only because of the work of Calvary in the blood of Jesus will we ever see heaven? Will you come? May God help you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the harmless, innocent, sinless, crimeless Christ, the Son of God. We thank thee that he was the only one that could save us from our sin. We thank thee that he paid the price and pardoned us there at the place called Calvary. Oh God, tonight you know there's troubled souls in this meeting. You know, Lord, the Holy Spirit has been digging deep and searching out tonight. And Father, we feel that and we can do nothing, Lord, but leave it with thee, O oh God, to work. We pray that men and women will face up to the fact that they are sinners and that God is calling them to himself, calling them out from behind all the shirah, all the hypocrisy, and all the things that wound them and hurt them, O oh God, and hide them. O oh God, help them to take that step tonight. They must take that step, Lord, and then thou will do the rest. We ask, Lord, that you'll come for Jesus' sake. Amen.